Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A young shooting victim found on the southwest side overnight. Police working this morning trying to figure out what exactly happened and what led to the gunfire. Plus, we're learning more about the U.S. citizen killed in a Russian attack in Ukraine. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington, the latest in the war and President Biden's call with China's president later on today, coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting at 61 degrees and a little foggy out there. Good morning. It is Friday, March 18th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Happy Friday. We finally made it to the end of the week and it's been a beautiful weather week. That's true. But before we get to weather, it has been a chaotic morning on the roadways. So we're going to check in with Stephen Cavazzo. Stephen, a lot going on. Uh, Max, Stephanie, as we walked into the station, there were several crashes that were reported. Let's go ahead and bring a closer look from Trans Guide. 1604 Petrenko <coughs> is one of the problem spots this morning. Right now, I just talked to our friends actually a few moments ago at Trans Guide. They're telling us that this portion of that corridor is going to be shut down. And as you can see, we do have those flashing lights out there. First responders working to obviously clear up this crash scene. Not clear what caused it. We're going to have some information from Jonathan Goto in just a moment. But we can tell you right now that is located in the westbound lanes of 1604 at Petrenko. Road. But as I mentioned, not the only problem this morning. Let's take a drive over here to 35 where we have a second crash that was reported just moments ago. I 35 southbound. I just learned that as you can see the slowdown there is happening in that direction at San Pedro Avenue. Thankfully, as elsewhere around the city, we're not really seeing a lot of issues, but these spots are definitely areas that you're going to want to avoid, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. As I mentioned, 1604 Petrenko is one of the problem spots this morning. That's where we find Jonathan Cotto live there right now. Jonathan, what have you been been able to find out. Good morning, Stephen. Well, right now I'm located off of 1604 on the city's far west side. I did have an opportunity to speak with uh, police department and firefighters here who are present on the scene. We're learning one woman is dead following this crash here. This is what the scene looks like right now. Police tell us a one car crash involving two people. Uh, the incident, they say, is the, the, the male driver was traveling southbound on 1604, went over a barrier went airborne and crashed into an embankment. Um, it's Medina Creek here on 1604. We have learned that that male driver was taken to the hospital and uh, is expected to be okay, but the female passenger did uh, did die in this incident. Right now, we have uh, the Bear County Sheriff's Department along with San Antonio Police and San Antonio Fire Department present here on the scene. But again, uh, the outcome of this crash, we have learned that that woman passenger has uh, passed away. This is all under investigation and certainly a busy morning for first responders. We've seen uh, another engine pass by here responding to another scene and as well. One of the deputies here take off to another call. Reporting from the city's far west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. So, Steph, you alluded to it earlier. Yes, the yes, weather. Beautiful weather week for those on spring Ooh, break. And yep. even for those who are working, it makes it enjoyable, right? Yes, it does. The only uh, thing that's going to be kind of out of the ordinary today is the wind, especially uh, this morning. Yeah. yeah, and wind has already started to really pick up in portions of the hill country. I've got this camera punched up just to see if it's going to start shaking as of yet. Not yet, but you look at some of these, uh, the winds out there to the northwest, uh, about 12 miles an hour at Bernie Stage, 17 New Braunfels, 24. Kerrville. These are the sustained winds, and then you've got the gusts already 33 in Kerrville, Stinson 23, 15 up the road in Balverde. So, yeah, hang on to your hat, and uh, hopefully, you don't find the uh, you know your lawn furniture or anything else in your neighbor's yard later on today. But it is going to be windy, especially the, the strongest winds are going to be pretty much the first half of the day. Temperatures, yeah, it's still very mild, but with those northerly winds and these cooler temperatures and the clearer skies, now wind obviously keeps the air kind of stirred up a little bit. You never get your cold coldest temperatures when you have winds like this, but I think all this uh, cooler air will continue to come in here and we will drop down uh, close to another 10 degrees within the next few hours. Of course, sun comes up later now, an hour later, so we have that much more time in the morning to, to cool down. And the humidity has moved on out of here. I know that one camera looked a little fuzzy looking at downtown, but we don't really have any problems as far as that because this dry air is definitely in place. And even though there's nothing formal posted right now, windy conditions, dry air, Fire danger is still on the high side, and that will be the case even in through the weekend. All the allergens we've got now just a kind of a laundry list out there, but everything still remains on the low side. So again, 
jacket this morning, uh, light jacket, especially in the hill country where it's even cooler right now. But I think we dropped down to low 50s, breezy wind out of the north, 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting, uh, gusting at times 30, 35, close to 40 miles per hour, as you saw already 33 up there, mile per hour wind gust in Kerrville and then 75 later on today. Good looking weekend, and we're still looking at some rain chances later on in the forecast. So that's very encouraging. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating, trying to figure out what exactly led up to a shooting of a minor overnight. This is what we know right now. Officers got a call for a young person shot around 9 p.m. They responded to this situation. This is Valley High Drive near Springvale Drive, but police say the shooting actually happened somewhere else. Still unclear how old this victim is, but an officer on the scene telling us he was shot in the shoulder, brought to Valley High location to get help. Right now, still no suspects in custody. No arrests have been made. And top stories this morning. Changes in parking and security are headed to the St. Mary's Strip in the next few weeks. During a meeting yesterday, Tobin Hill residents and the Business Owners Association discussed the solutions to work the complaints about the crime, trash, and parking. Now, 16 out of the 19 businesses have agreed to voluntarily change their operating standards. Some of those changes have to do with limiting the entry age to 21 years old, the price of drinks, and even hiring off-duty sheriff deputies to patrol inside businesses and on the streets. Some of those changes are already underway. The San Antonio Police Department will implement some residential-only street parking with officers patrolling the area starting next weekend. Now, for patrons wanting to visit St. Mary's bars and businesses, it seems that ride sharing is in their future. We need more little areas where ride share can pick up and drop off passengers safely instead of just pulling on the side of the street. The overall goal for the Tobin Hill Community Association and Business Associations to work together and see positive progress all around in the next two years. So you can head over to our website at kset.com to see what an entertainment area in Dallas did to find common ground in a similar situation. Now to the latest in the war in Ukraine, more civilian deaths reported there, including an American. This as Russia's war continues to rage on. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says he personally agrees with President Biden that Russia is committing war crimes in Ukraine. The president is scheduled to speak with his Chinese counterpart today to assess where Beijing stands on the war. So as ABC's Faith Abube reports, the Biden administration, there's a big concern about why weeks into this war, China still has yet to denounce Russia's deadly attacks on Ukraine and on their civilians. In the Ukrainian capital city of Kyiv, Relentless Russian missile strikes leaving neighborhood after neighborhood in ruins, surviving locals sifting through the rubble of their destroyed homes. To the east, heavy black smoke billowing over a street market in Kharkiv. U.S. officials say as Ukraine's resistance stalls the Russian advance on the ground, the Kremlin is now relying on longer range missile systems doing major damage across the country. The ABC News source adding that generations of high ranking members of the U.S. military, quote, are simply simply astonished how poorly the Russians have performed. Fears now about what Putin may do next. We believe that Moscow may be setting the stage to use a chemical weapon and then falsely blame Ukraine to justify escalating its attacks on the Ukrainian people. Secretary Blinken says he personally believes Russia is committing war crimes in Ukraine. The latest Russian shelling of a school and community center reportedly killing more than 20 people. And now a State Department official confirms a U.S. citizen, 68-year-old James Whitney Hill, was among those killed in a Russian attack in Chernihiv. His family says he was out looking for food. President Biden calling Putin a murderous dictator and a thug. Putin's brutality and what he's doing and his troops are doing in Ukraine is just inhumane. The president also sent to speak with China's leader today about whether Beijing is planning to help Russia with its war in Ukraine in any way. Bloomberg reports there are, quote, signs that China is seeking ways to soften the blow of sanctions imposed on Russia. The fact that China has not denounced what Russia is doing in and in and of itself speaks volumes. In the meantime, a bipartisan group of senators is heading to Poland and Germany this weekend to learn more from top military leaders about the NATO and U.S. response to the war in Ukraine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Time now, 439, 60 degrees out. And coming up next in your morning sports, could the Cowboys be hurting themselves with all the moves they're making right now? Details when we come back. Oh, there's a few players who've been fan favorites who are no longer going to be with the Cowboys. We're going to break it all down. Ouch. <laughs> no, we are wearing blue today, so. 
<laughs> something. All right, taking a live look out there. 60 degrees. We're talking winds. We're talking weekend forecast. We're talking with Mike when we come back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. So we knew the cap space situation with the Cowboys was going to be a problem, but now they almost seem self-destructive at the start of the offseason. Well, technically, the start of the real season this week. They've already traded away star wide receiver Amari Cooper. That way they can re-sign Michael Gallup for five years, $62.5 million. Here's the thing. Gallup will miss most of the season while he recovers from a torn ACL. And he's not even available for September. They also lost wide receiver Cedric Wilson to Miami and... The Dolphins also signed the Cowboys' longtime offensive lineman, Connor Williams. Now, we just saw yesterday the decision to release starting right tackle Lyle Collins, a move expected to save the Cowboys $10 million. So, now the other professional football team. Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson informing the Cleveland Browns they will not be a part of trade talks for his services. That leaves the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons of those left on Watson's list to play for next. This after telling the Carolina Panthers last night they are out of the running as well. But the move by the Browns flying to Houston to meet with Watson, it's actually driven a wedge between the Browns front office and their starting quarterback, don't going to say star quarterback, May Baker Mayfield. Yesterday, Baker Mayfield requested a trade, telling people that he's nobody's plan B, but the Browns actually denied his request, and that's clearly led to some bad feelings. From football to the court, we're talking Spurs. Coming off that win against the Thunder, next up we have the New Orleans Pelicans tonight here at home, AT&T Center. Tip-off set for 7.30. Important to note though, mm -hmm. yes, it's a home game, but we are still in the running for the playoffs. I know, it's very exciting yes. after the last win. I know, you went to two games a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, oh. it, was, it was nice. Living the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time now, 4.44, 60 degrees out. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. It is 446. Taking a look out there at Loop 16 of 4 and Petranco Road. Looks like there's an accident right there. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Yeah, no, it has been a lot going on throughout the roadways throughout the morning. So obviously we're going to be checking in with Stephen a lot. But Mike, is that a green moon behind you? Well, when the moon gets too close to San Antonio River. Oh, ah, that's appropriate. <laughs> and of course, today is the day of the uh, the full moon, and we should be able to see it. It's going to be beautiful. I saw it this morning, this. and it was just about uh, straight up in the sky. So I don't know if we're going to be able to see the, the moon setting from this view later on today. It may be waiting a little bit longer until we're off the air to set. But uh, this camera is not shaking, so that's kind of the, you know, the the thing to go with here as far as the wind hasn't really picked up. You can see an airplane right there heading off to the north and to the northwest. So that's where the winds are coming from, and it is going to be on the breezy side. So we're at 60 right now. There's the wind, 16 miles per hour out of the northwest. Kerrville 17, 16 Castroville, and 13 at Stinson. It's going to be pretty breezy all day long, and then we've got these wind gusts right now. 24 Kerrville. Actually, that settled down ever so slightly. It was 33 just a couple of minutes ago. 25 at the airport, 14 at Bulverde, and it was probably going to be getting even stronger as far as the wind gusts, at least throughout the morning hours. We're looking at some gusts, uh, 30, 35, close to 40 miles per hour, and that is going to be it's going to be the windiest in the morning hours. So you're heading off, uh, you know, I guess for ladies ponytail day or something like that for the kids because you know it's going to not be a good hair day as far as that goes. And and then later on today, we are going to be seeing the winds start to subside. Still going to be breezy throughout the day, and then they'll settle down later on tonight. Temperatures, we're in the 60s right now here in town, but I think we continue to drop down throughout the day. And then as we go on in through the noontime, and why those numbers are changing on me like that, sorry about that, but we are going to make it up into the uh, mid-70s then later on today, and we're going to have lots of sunshine, but it is still going to be on the windy side. Now, as far as the humidity, it is dry right now. This is the air that we were in throughout most of the day yesterday and these winds coming in here out of the northwest. So that continues to pull in the very dry air. So as I mentioned off the top, even though we don't have anything formally posted, dry air, windy conditions, we do have a high fire danger. That's going to remain the situation even through tomorrow and, and throughout the day on Sunday. You know, a decent little breeze, but the ground is just so, so dry. And this remains very dry even through most of the day tomorrow and Sunday. This then we'll start to see things shift around and that's going to then pull in some more humidity late Sunday into Monday. Upstairs in the atmosphere when you have this darker shade of gray on the water vapor imagery that means 
going to have some beautiful blue skies out there today, albeit breezy, so hang on to your hat this morning. So as far as temperatures today, 66 degrees at noon, sunny, windy, and yesterday we made it up into the upper 70s, mid 70s today, down a little bit. Again, breezy conditions, uh, still no jacket weather tonight. Probably want to take a jacket if you are going to be out later on tonight because uh, this evening, because things are going to be cooling off fairly quickly. We'll make it down to 46 tomorrow morning, then up to 78. So get still slightly below normal, low temperatures, slightly above normal, high temperatures. And we get into Sunday, great start, clouds increase, and we're still looking at a chance for some rain on Monday. It looks a kind of conflicting computer models. Uh, one has the rain ending about midday. The other one has a little uh, extra little taste of rain later on in the afternoon. So a few showers, a couple of thunderstorms, we'll get that sorted out over the weekend. But at least we got some rain chances. That's good news. But good news because we yeah. need that. Yep. And hang on to your hat this morning. We will. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Time now 450, 59 degrees out. And coming up next, two new horror films are coming out today. Your mm -hmm. entertainment news right after the break. But first, look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, three, six, six, fireball four. Daily four, six, four, five, nine, fireball two. Cash five, four, 11, 17, 20, 28, and your Texas two step, 13, 27, 33, 35, bonus ball 11. We, we live, we dream. We work. The spectacular rise and fall of the company We Work and its controversial CEO, Adam Newman, are the subjects of the new limited series We Crash. Jared Leto stars as the Israeli born entrepreneur who at one point convinced SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Son to invest $4 billion. $4 billion. Someone gives you a check for. You know, you're going to find out who people are once they have that kind of money floating around, and it changes everything and probably everyone in the company. We Crashed also stars Anne Hathaway. Three episodes are out today on Apple TV+. Plus. I remember so much. Out today in theaters, it's the battle of two horror movies. Sandra Oh stars in Umma, while X is being described as an erotic slasher film. Yeah. The whole school's cursed. Streaming on Amazon Prime Video is another horror film. Master stars upcoming Oscars co-host Regina Hall. Like any pre-existing conditions? I'm a woman. While the series Life and Beth, debuting on Hulu, is created by and stars another Oscars co-host, Amy Schumer. Dolly Parton might get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame whether she wants to or not. The Hall issued a statement saying it's moving forward with her as a nominee, despite her saying earlier this week that she didn't feel she's earned the right to get in, so she's bowing out. The Hall says she has earned the right, and we'll find out if she gets in in May. And bon anniversaire to Lily Collins, the Emily in Paris star turning 33 today, while the Equalizer's Queen Latifah is 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Queen Latifah looks fantastic. Oh. But I love the two stories in there. Dolly Parton, you will be in the Rock and Roll Hall. I know, whether you like it or not. <laughs> no, she, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, she kind of deserves it. I of mean, course. Cause, I mean, some people, you know, consider some some of that genre, you know, rock and roll. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, we just want to honor you, Dolly. That's it. So. We're working nine to five to get you in there. Uh. Uh, right. <laughs> the WeWork uh, movie or series looks fantastic. Series, the series because yeah. we kind of watched WeWork play out and then crumble in real time. And we were supposed to have WeWork in San Antonio. I, I didn't know about San, yeah, San so Antonio. Yeah, so I'm not going to try to ruin the series for anyone, but they tried to go public, bring in a lot more money, and then all the files and all their uh, their records showed some some pretty bad stuff. I like that they uh, picked Anne Hathaway She's great. and Jared Leto yeah. for, for the, the two top characters there. So, yeah, I'm yeah, intrigued. Interesting. I don't have Apple TV, but I might oh. have to get it. I know. Between that and Disney, <laughs> and it's Disney like a, it's a whole thing. <laughs> I'm like the OG streaming with like, I'm just old. No. All right. No. No, no, Netflix and HBO, that's what I got. Those are important, too. Time now, 4.56, 59 degrees out. And as you're waking up with us, don't forget to have a good breakfast to start the day. We have some tips on how to make breakfast a little easier and healthier coming up after the break. And first, a live look out at the roadways. It has been the story of the morning. Numerous crashes out there. We're going to be joined with Stephen Cavazos and Jonathan Coto in just a bit for your full recap. We'll be right back. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Taking a live look out of the Alamo City, it has been a picture perfect week for so many families on spring break. So what is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Mike Osage in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is Friday. Happy Friday. It is March 18th. Yeah, happy Friday. Uh, should be an exciting weekend too. People who maybe didn't get a chance to celebrate St. Patrick's Day yesterday will have an opportunity on Saturday. That's right. All right, so Mike, the big question is, how's the weekend going to look? Fantastic. Yeah, they died the river yesterday, and they're going to yeah. do it again on uh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's just fantastic out there. Uh, this morning, now, if you were on a boat, not that you're on a mm. boat on the, the, <laughs> on the San Antonio River, but uh, yeah, sailboat, you'd be uh, kind of cruising along there because we got some pretty good wind going on, and that's really going to be kind of the, uh, the story for this morning. Winds out of the northwest right now, 13 miles per hour. That's the sustained winds. Then we've got some gusts on top of that. We've Drop down somewhat 59 degrees right now, and the air has really, really started to dry out. We're going to make it up to 75 today, so down somewhat from yesterday. Of course, yesterday we had those stubborn clouds sticking around, so that kept uh, temperatures from getting up into the 80s. Now, as far as the uh, the wind this morning, because we had that front move on through here, it is very blustery out there. Winds are coming in out of the uh, northwest again, about 15 to uh, 20 miles per hour, and as you can see, even out there in Kerrville, 25 sustained winds right now. And then we've got the wind gust once again back up to about 33 at Kerrville, 22 at the airport, 23 mile per hour wind gust at Stinson. So and hang on to your hat if by chance you drive a high profile vehicle, both hands on the steering wheel, which you should do anyway, according to the experts. 59, we've dropped down a few more degrees in town and we've got these low 50s here in the uh, hill country. So even though we do have windy conditions, which usually don't allow you to get the coolest temperatures, we'll get that colder air or cooler air coming on in here. So we'll start off uh, just about a normal high and windy conditions, very dry air. Dew points have really dropped down. Fire danger is high again today and pretty much throughout the weekend uh, just because we the ground pretty much obviously is dry as a bone. So we've got those windy and uh, dry conditions out there. So just watch it with any outdoor burning today, tomorrow, as well as on uh, Sunday. Now, allergens, everything's on the light side as of right now. So seasonably cool this morning, very breezy or just call it downright windy, windy and winds will tend to ease up later on this afternoon somewhat and make it up into the mid 70s. And then this weekend, Cool mornings, great afternoons. Humidity starts to increase late Sunday, and we do have a chance for a couple of showers and a few storms. So that is going to be a very, very welcome sight to see some rain around here on Monday. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve McAvazos. I know there's big problems out there. What's the latest? Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, this is not the only issue that we've been observing here on these Transguide cameras. Flashing lights at Petrenko. That means we uh, do have a crash to talk about here. We can tell you right now what we've learned from our friends over at Transguide is that this stretch is closed here, and you can see vehicles exiting at Petrenko, but uh, not clear yet on exactly where that crashing is. Jonathan Goto can have a clearer shot in just a moment, but let's go ahead and take you right to the map because although we are seeing some problems, uh, we're seeing more green than anything, but let's go ahead and bring it in here to 1604 right there in those westbound lanes is where you can see that traffic starting to build very early start. The morning still young, but we're starting to spot a lot of issues out there. Another problem spot is right over here off 35 southbound. We told you about this crash about a little about half an hour or so ago when we're still seeing some of the impacts with traffic moving pretty slowly in those southbound lanes of 35 again right at San Pedro Avenue, but we're going to be watching these areas closely again. 16 to 4 Petrenko, one of the problem spots this morning. As I mentioned, Jonathan Cotto is live there this morning. Jonathan, we know that this is a deadly crash. What else have you been able to find out? That's right, Stephen. Right now we're learning that the passenger involved in this crash is dead. This is what the scene looks like right now. They tell us uh, that this crash happened to close uh, to one o'clock this morning. They tell us a male driver and a female passenger were traveling southbound on 1604 when the driver went off the road into the median, crashing through a barrier and falling about 60 feet down into this embankment. They say the vehicle did go airborne before rolling several times, catching on fire and landing almost on the complete opposite end of this embankment. And now, folks, here, I'm standing here on the opposite end facing uh, north on 1604. And this is just an example of that barrier here on the opposite end, the barrier that that driver went through. It's a pretty solid barrier barricade here on this end. Just a couple feet away, a few inches, that embankment, it's about a 60 feet drop. So right now, police are investigating the rate of speed and if alcohol was even a factor in this crash. But of course, we'll have more details for you as that information is made available. As of now, we know the driver of that car was taken to the hospital and he's expected to be okay.
Reporting live from the city's far west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Top stories this morning. A Castle Hills city councilman caught on camera accosting two women at an antique shop, accusing them of racial profiling and then threatening to discourage people in Castle Hills from actually going into the antique store. So take a look. The defenders dug deeper into this situation and then covered what led up to it and why the city of Castle Hills decided not to punish the longtime city councilman. Now, Douglas Gregory says after the incident, he did return to the store. He cleared up the issue with the owner, but one of the employees says Gregory has still not apologized to her or the other woman he was seen yelling at. So if you missed the story last night, you can watch it again right now. Just head to KSAT.com. You can find it right there on our homepage. And on a lighter note, as you're getting ready for the day, you may already be getting something to eat. So while we've all heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, for a lot of us, it's just grabbing a piece of toast on the go or skipping breakfast altogether. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris has the expert's advice on making a breakfast that's easy and healthy for you. It's a morning time squeeze for Annette Lizette. Feeding your kids a healthy breakfast before school can be challenging. Getting them something to eat quickly in the time that I have. So it's either like a waffle, cereal, or even granola bars. Breakfast doesn't have to be elaborate to be healthy. Check your dairy aisle. Yogurt is packed with nutrients, protein, bone building calcium, and blood pressure balancing potassium. Plain yogurt has no added sugars, just topped with fruit for flavor. Cottage cheese is low in calories and high in protein. You can add it to smoothies or scramble it into the eggs. Cereal is easy and doesn't need to be overly sugary or bland and boring. The almonds have a pretty good flavor. I do taste the cinnamon. It's very faint, which is kind of refreshing. Consumer Reports top picks include Nature's Path Organic Heritage Flakes, Post Great Grains Raisin Dates and Pecans, and General Mills Cheerios. All of our top rated cereals contain whole grains, which are linked to lower rates of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. And now you can find added sugar on the label and keep that number under six grams per serving. What about eggs? They can be more filling than cereals. Just add some veggies to make a breakfast that's healthy and delicious. And instead of drinking fruit juice, CR says try whole fruit instead. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, so you're up dark and early every morning. Yes. What is your go-to grab-and-go breakfast? The waffle. The waffle? But I don't dress it up like you do. <laughs> Tell them. So created like a banana sandwich yeah, where it's yeah. like two like toaster waffles real quick. You throw some like, you know, peanut butter, almond butter, whatever you want, and then you cut up a banana, grab it, and it's like a little sandwich on the go. Yeah, it's pretty filling when yeah, you do that. It's yeah. fantastic. Mike just gave me a look. Sounds good. Sounds okay. Good. Oh, yeah. We'll check in with Mike in a little bit. Time now, 507, 58 degrees out. And coming up after the break, a warning for parents on what could be a dangerous new trend among young people. And speaking of Mike, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. If you've been on spring break this last week, you have been lucky. So what are we looking at this weekend? What about the rest of the day? We're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back in your morning headlines. A warning for parents about a new popular trend on TikTok, and it could be dangerous. It's called the Orbeez Challenge. So Orbeez are small water beads, and this Orbeez Challenge actually has some young people shooting the soft gel beads at random people. And here's the thing, it's causing a lot of injuries, even leading to some arrests. In Florida, a 19-year-old man arrested for shooting Orbeez with a toy gun at random people. They hit an Amazon delivery driver and even a 10 year old boy. In another case, also in Florida, an 18 year old and 17 year old, they are accused of shooting Orbeez at several different people, breaking the skin and leaving red welts on people. And switching now to the pandemic, Moderna is asking the FDA to authorize a second COVID-19 booster shot for everyone 18 and older. In order to do that, the company needs an amendment of the FDA's emergency use authorization for its coronavirus vaccine. That amendment would need to allow a fourth dose for adults who've had an initial booster of any of the authorized or approved vaccines. Now, Pfizer and BioNTech have also asked the FDA for emergency use authorization for an additional booster of their COVID vaccine. However, that application was only for adults 65 and older. All right, the White House wants building owners to upgrade their ventilation in the facilities. This way, they can help fight COVID. The Biden administration launched the Clean Air in Buildings Challenge yesterday. The administration wants building owners and operators to use the Environmental Protection Agency's guidelines to improve the ventilation systems. According to the EPA, actions like enhancing filtration and cleaning could reduce the risk of spreading airborne infectious diseases like we saw with COVID. 
Time now, 512, 58 degrees out. And coming up next in your tech news, Samsung releasing a new phone that will give you more power at a lower price. Details after the break. Welcome to Allstate. Here, safe driving saves more than just your cargo. Safe driving saves you 40% with DriveWise. The safer you drive, the more you save with Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. Nicorette knows quitting smoking is freaking hard. You get advice like, just stop, go for a run, go for 10 runs, run a marathon. Instead, start small with Nicorette, which can lead to something big. Start stopping with Nicorette. For intelligent identity protection, Smarter is Identity IQ. Smarter is protecting what's yours with real-time monitoring and alerts for all three credit bureaus. For five times intelligent identity protection, visit IdentityIQ.com to save 15% on your first year. Good morning and welcome back. PayPal users now able to send money to Ukrainians. ABC's Ike Jachi has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, PayPal helping Ukraine. Users can now send money to Ukrainians wherever they are. Previously, people in Ukraine were only able to send money out of the country. Now, they can receive funds and make transfers. PayPal is waiving most fees on Ukrainian accounts. Samsung has unveiled a new mid-range phone that features more power at a lower price. The A53 5G comes with a bigger battery that the company claims will last for two days. It costs $499, $50 less than its predecessor. Samsung is already taking pre-orders. And T-Mobile has partnered with BMW to offer the first 5G-connected cars in the U.S. The vehicles come with unlimited voice calling and unlimited 5G data for 2022 models and future vehicles. The service can be added to a customer's existing plan for $20 a month. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. All right, I got to ask a question. You saw the, the BMW there. That was okay. like a big screen TV in there. Okay, I thought you were going to ask about my, my, my lack of no. cameras on my phone. <laughs> no. Next update. Yeah. All right, but speaking of the BMW, we got to go to traffic. Stephen Cavazos yeah. this morning, a lot going on out there. Well, it's not sure uh, what car in a vehicle was involved in this crash, Max. Uh, let's make sure that we make that clear. We're still trying to find out information here. 1604 at Petrenko is, again, one of the problem spots that we've been watching this morning. We do have vehicles that are exiting right now. We can tell you that this is a deadly crash. Jonathan Goto has been giving us some information has been has he's been live on the ground right now. I have noticed somewhat of a little bit of a buildup that's uh, somewhat improving here on the westbound lanes of 1604, uh, not really causing issues for drivers, given that the morning is still very young. But keep in mind, if you need to find that alternate route, just get off Petrenko and on Grossenbacher if you need to get on a highway 90 to avoid those flashing lights. Give those first responders plenty of room this morning. Let's drive over here where we still have this crash actually just cleared off of I 35 southbound at San Pedro Avenue. This has been a pretty busy start to the end of the work week, but wider look that that map that bird's eye view doesn't really show that we're seeing any congestion. Thankfully, we're getting closer to 6 a.m. minute by minute, but we're going to be watching the roads closely and give you those updates as the morning does go on. Guys, thank uh, you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Now, Mike, we haven't seen too much precipitation out there, have we? <sighs> no, unfortunately. The, the nice thing is we do have chances of rain coming in here Monday. Um, yes, there is a very slight risk to have some stronger thunderstorms. Most of that would be up to the north, but at least we do have that, that rain chance because everything is just obviously bone dry out there. And what's not helping that is the fact that it's so windy and then we have even more dry air working its way on in here. And this camera out there at the airport, it has been kind of quivering at times. You know, a lot of times you get those stronger winds and it does shake that camera somewhat. So we've got 14 mile per hour winds at the airport. 16 Port SA, 23 Kerrville, and gusts already this morning. 24 at the airport, 31 at Kerrville, 35 at Lost Maples. And this is what we're going to be looking at throughout the day. And all of this, these stronger winds will continue to sort of uh, work their way across the area. We don't have anything for most of our area formally posted as far as any fire threat, but coming out of the Corpus Christi office in our extreme southern counties do have a red flag warning 9 a.m. to 7 PM. Of course, a lot of the uh, red flag warnings the past couple of days were later on in the day, but the windiest conditions are going to be first portion of the day and obviously down to the south later on in the afternoon. But again, everywhere, anywhere, just watch it with any outdoor or don't even do any outdoor burning today and watch it if you're even firing up the grill because anything that, that 
starts up, if fire gets going, it is just going to spread quicker than quick. All right, this morning, temperatures will continue to drop down. We get that cooler air that's going to be moving on in here and very, very windy. Pretty much uh, the windiest conditions are going to be in the first portion of the day. Still going to be breezy all day long. We'll make it back up into the 60s, mid 60s by noon, and then we'll top off at 75. Now, yesterday we only mustered upper 70s just because those clouds really stayed stubborn throughout a good chunk of the day. But today we have plenty of sunshine out there and yeah, we'll still have a, a decent breeze. Now, once the sun starts starts to go down tonight and the wind slacking off a little bit and with this very, very dry air in place. Yes, it will cool off quite quickly. Great looking weekend. Unfortunately, with the dry and the very low humidity and any breeze, fire danger is still going to remain hot or high throughout the weekend. Then the humidity shoots back up here on Monday. That's our rain chance and that's encouraging that we do, like I said, have that chance of rain. Here's long range computer model. Obviously nothing's going on in through the weekend. We just have clear skies, plenty of sunshine. We start off with sunshine on Sunday. Clouds work their way back in here. As you saw, the humidity starts to come back in and then we have that chance for some rain. And now again, broad brush computer model, but that chance of rain does exist primarily the first portion of the day. This model takes the rain out of here by about mid afternoon. Different computer model. And this is what we'll still have to continue to watch over the next couple of days. Same scenario in the morning has some of the, the scattered rain around here starts to work it out, but then throws some more back on in here throughout the evening hours on Monday. And again, chance for some stronger storms, but most of those would be further up uh, in the northeastern portion of the state. We'd be kind of on the tail end of it. 66 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies again. Windy, that's kind of the story for today. 75 degrees for a high temperature. And then tomorrow, good looking day, great looking, especially the first portion of the day on Sunday. We start off coolish in the morning, beautiful in the afternoon, increasing cloudy skies on Sunday, and a couple of showers maybe late to Sunday night and on Monday. And then we'll clear back out and get another kind of shot of drier air moving on in here. Well, we need the rain, but at least we'll have a nice weekend. Yeah, and, and again, this morning, you know, you may have to be doing a little weaving in and out of your garbage cans or something like that if they get blown <laughs> over. So I put my plant in the front away. Mm, because, yeah, good idea. Front porch is now inside the house. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, All right. Mike. Thank you, Mike. 522, 58 degrees out. And coming up next, a unique award show hits a milestone and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame unveils a massive new Beatles exhibition. We're celebrating the year's best movies and television in this 20th anniversary special. Stories by grown-ups for grown-ups. Alan Cumming returns to host this year's AARP Movies for Grown-ups Awards. The show combines the glitz and glamour of Hollywood A-listers with advocating for the 50-plus audience and encouraging films and TV shows that resonate with older viewers. And when they asked me to host the awards a few years ago, I thought, oh, I see, They're, that's funny. They're getting someone young and spunky to host their uh, old people awards and then I thought oh it's over 50 and I'm over 50 uh, so it's not a young and spunky person at all it's actually my completely my demographic the AARP movies for grown-ups awards airs Friday night on PBS Back to where you once belong. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has just opened what it calls its most ambitious featured exhibition ever the Beatles get back to let it be features everything from the band's instruments and clothing to photos and original lyrics many on loan from the Beatles families. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's awesome. The Beatles exhibit's awesome. I want to go back to the yeah, AARP right. awards. Uh-huh. I feel like, <laughs> well, no, and I, what I'm about to say is I don't know any of the new actors or actresses. Mm -hmm. So, like, when they had the story early in the half hour, like Lily Collins, I was like, I don't know who that is. But I knew everyone in the clips. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, just crazy. I don't know why... Well, you know, they they earned they earned their spot. No, I know. I'm in, just in the fact that you recognize them. Yeah. That's that's actually. Oh yeah, the a best compliment. of the best. Yeah, Mike's we, giving me a look. Where I was gonna go with this? <laughs> just be careful. Where yeah. you're going. No, they're the best. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm well, you, not. We appreciate these actors, and we feel like maybe the award show should be called something else. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I'm not up on all the the new stuff the, yet. The so good maybe. movies award show. Yeah. The good movies award show, as Mike calls it. There you go. I like that better. <laughs> 527, 57 degrees out. And as COVID restrictions start to ease up, health officials are beginning to lay out plans to tra transition out of this pandemic, and still to come, how they are approaching this situation to try and get everyone back to a new normal safely. Plus, a man shot while driving down Highway 90. We have the latest details right after the break. And do you have any hobbies? Well, it turns out there could be more benefits to them than you might think. We're going to have the details ahead on GMSA at 6. Seems like there may be good news when it comes to COVID. How health officials are preparing to transition out of this pandemic and hopefully get us back to a new safe normal. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's been a nice weather week and it'll continue today. However, it's going to be a little windy out there. All right, good morning. 5.30 this morning, March 18th. It is Friday and we're starting off in 57 degrees. Yeah, happy Friday. It's great whatever weather we start out because, you know, <laughs> it's Friday. But no, actually, it's going to be a good one today as well. That's true. All right, so Mike, we're ending the week. Good temperatures? Yeah, yeah, fantastic uh, as far as temperatures are concerned. But as Steph was talking about, the wind is definitely going to be the issue today. And you can see the plane taking off off to the northwest. That's where the winds are coming in. The camera's not shaking. I mean, this is always... One good indication we see this thing getting bounced around if it is uh, windy out there at the airport. Northwesterly wind, 14 miles per hour. That's the sustained wind. Then we have the gusts on top of that and very dry air. We've got a temperature of 58. We have been dropping down in the past couple of hours. We'll continue to drop down, so still light jacket this morning. But with this low dew point temperature, dry air, windy conditions, even though nothing is formally posted throughout most of the area, of course, fire danger is still going to be high today and really through the weekend until we get that chance of rain coming in here on uh, Monday. 10, 15, 20 mile per hour winds, uh, 23 Kerrville gusts on top of that. And we're going to be seeing gusts in the 30, 35 mile per hour range, especially the first portion of the day. So hang on to your hat and uh, I don't know, batting down the lawn furniture today. We do have low amounts of everything out there. It seems like everything's kind of coming into bloom now. And oak really hasn't started to go up as of yet. But I know there's a couple of folks been seeing those. I think they're formally called or officially called catkins. I call them little dingle things hanging from the trees there. So, you know, we end up getting well. Yeah, I mean, and then you get the yellow dust from that. But yeah, that's yet to come. 66 today at noon, 75 for a high temperature today. Again, 15, 25 mile per hour winds and it is going to be gusty especially the first portion of the day through about early afternoon. Then the winds will start to ease up a little bit. Good looking weekend makes some outdoor plans. Plus, we'll talk about those rain chances coming up a little bit uh, later on on Monday. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. I know you got your hands full this morning. What's the latest? Yeah, it's been a busy start, Mike. Right now, we again, 1604 Petranco. It's one of the problem spots this morning that we have been keeping a close eye on. As we get a closer look, Trans Guide does show vehicles are able to exit without any problem uh, at this hour. However, earlier in the morning, we were seeing a slight build up in the southbound lanes of 1604, but first responders have been out there for quite a while, and that's because we understand this is a deadly crash, and unfortunately, we're not sure exactly what caused this, but we are seeing our first responders that have been busy out there. Again, the southbound lanes right there at Petranco Road, no buildup at this hour, but the morning's still young, so as more people get out on the road, and if we still see that crash scene out there, we'll likely start to see a buildup. But let's go ahead and get that bird's eye view at 533. We're not seeing problems anywhere else around the city or any of our viewing areas, so that's some good news especially if you have to make your way out the door in the next few moments. But if you have to head down here, 1604 Petranco, make sure to drive carefully. Jonathan Goto has been there live throughout the morning. Jonathan, what is the latest? Stephen, right now we're learning that there has been a fatality involved in this crash. The woman passenger inside of the vehicle uh, it was pronounced dead here at the scene. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We are learning that this crash happened close to 1 o'clock this morning. They tell us, police tell us a male driver and a female passenger were traveling southbound on 1604 when the driver went off the road into the median, crashing through a barrier and falling about 60 feet down into an embankment. We're right over Medina Creek right now. Now, they say the vehicle did go airborne before rolling several times, catching on fire and landing almost on the complete opposite end of this embankment. But, of course, all of this is under investigation. Now, let me tell you, Stephen, right now, traffic is being diverted right now. Drivers here, you can see them. They are taking the Marbach exit. So all of the traffic here is on the access road. Uh, the 
the main lanes right now are blocked off because of this crash. And of course, right now, police are telling us they are looking into seeing if alcohol was a factor and also determining the rate of speed that the driver was traveling. But of course, all that information is still under investigation. We'll update you as that is made available to us. Reporting live from the city's far west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Also new this morning, a man shot while driving down Highway 90 this morning. It happened just before 3 a.m. near Callahan Road. Now, according to police, the man told officers that a vehicle was following him and then someone inside that vehicle started shooting at him. The man was shot in the armpit and suffered some injuries to his face from the wind, wind down breaking. Now, he was taken to University Hospitals, expected to be okay. Right now, it's unclear if police have any leads on a suspect. Some good news about COVID. Community levels and projected deaths are down. So now officials are talking about the transition out of this emergency phase. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, that means relaxing restrictions and preparing for the future. We want to make sure that people have an opportunity to relax their mitigation strategies when things are good, as they are right now. Health officials are starting to talk about transitioning out of the COVID-19 emergency phase. Here are the numbers behind that good news. Less than 1% of people in the U.S. now live in areas with high community levels. So the CDC recommends few people need to wear a mask in indoor public spaces. It's not too soon if you observe the caveat that's associated with that. And the caveat is we need to be flexible. More good news is the CDC forecasts a decline in weekly COVID deaths. Our hospitals are not full, but then that they should put that mask in a drawer. A resurgence could come from an Omicron subvariant that spreads quickly. I would not be surprised given the fact that we've begun to open up and we have an increase in the BA2 variant that we'll be seeing an increase in cases. Experts say it might not be as deadly as other variants, especially if people are boosted. Moderna says it's asking the FDA to authorize another booster for emergency use for adults. Pfizer wants another one for those 65 and older. The final bit of good news is hope for the future. This may very well become a seasonal disease where the amplitude of disease, the amount of disease that's out there gets less and less over time. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. In other news, lawmakers are working to suspend normal trade relations with Russia in response to the Kremlin's brutal invasion of Ukraine. The U.S. House passed a bill to suspend trade relations with Russia in Belarus yesterday. The legislation now heads to the Senate, where Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he will work to get it quickly passed. Russia currently has the most favored nation status when it comes to trade, meaning lower tariffs and fewer barriers. Last week, President Biden said the U.S. would call for that status to be revoked, but that would require approval from Congress. And while several Western companies have suspended operations in Russia, one American business is staying right where they are. Coke Industries says its two glass manufacturing facilities will continue to operate right there in Russia. The conglomerate says shutting down operations would actually do more harm than good because the plants would be handed over to the Russian government. The company has condemned Russia for its invasion of Ukraine, and the company also says it is complying with all sanctions, laws, and regulations. Time now, just about 5.38, 57 degrees out. And medical supplies donated and gathered for those in Ukraine. Coming up after the break, another example of San Antonio's urge to help. It is amazing to see San Antonio come together and help out people in a whole different country around the world. All right, speaking of San Antonio, taking a live look out there, 57 now. What is the rest of the day? What does your weekend look like? We're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments. San Antonio continuing to show support for Ukraine. Yesterday, a medical supply drive at the Hilton Garden Inn, the nonprofit Ukrainian San Antonio, they spearheaded the, the effort. They collected medical supplies, things like bandages, dressings. Our photojournalist, Billy Caldera, he was there giving us an inside look at all the generosity. Get the boys out here to carry this. There's some people in need, and what little we can do here, we can at least do something. A lot of Ukrainians, uh, they just died from uh, bleeding, so we need tourniquets to just stop bleeding. We just brought some medical supplies, hopefully we can get to Ukraine in time. My daughter's on spring break, and I think it's really important for our children to realize that the freedom and the benefits that we have, there's other people who are fighting for their lives and are in need of food and medical supplies and clothes. And so I brought her here today with me on her spring break so that we could both do this together and give back. Businesses 
nonprofits helping the Ukrainian Association here in San Antonio with the needed supplies. We know what's in this backpack? No. It's a full med. We have uh, some Ukrainian team, we call it medical team. They develop a list. So the boxes are labeled by numbers and those are the different categories of supplies that are going. First category is first aid. Emergency, dressing, gauze, those are the types that are going in there. For number two, we have hospital equipment. Third category is just like um, ibuprofen, drops for eyes. And then four is surgical supplies. But our program is towards civilians, towards simple people, towards doctors who are helping uh, civilians to get out from the ruined buildings, from the cars, from the shootings. It takes actions to demonstrate compassion, and that's what's happening here. And it's amazing. We really appreciate everyone who is doing it for us. When you think you don't have something to give, you do. So so please help. And again, that was photojournalist Billy Caldera putting that together. It's good to see all the people out there volunteering. It really was so inspiring seeing San Antonians step up and help out, especially people, you know, on spring break. It was a perfect time to do it. Yes, it is, and went out there to help. All right, time now, 542, 57 degrees out. And coming up next, many businesses dealing with staffing shortages because of the pandemic. However, after getting through spring break, Fiesta Texas and SeaWorld saying they're ready for their peak season. In this morning's GMA First Look, the race to save Ukraine's art and culture. Hundreds of sandbags covering this statue in Odessa and priceless art now hiding underground of the National Museum. Dozens of volunteers wrapping these centuries-old statues in fireproof insulation and fortifying the walls outside of this chapel built in the 1600s. Lviv is a city built on history and its citizens determined to save it. It's really important uh, to uh, look look on that uh, building because it helps people to remember that we are part of uh, something really important for us, uh, that we are a part of a nation, that we are a part of uh, a big history of our country. Uh, and coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on these brave men and women, plus the very latest live reporting from on the ground across Ukraine. With your GMA First Look, I'm Maggie Bruley, ABC News. And welcome back. It's 546. Spring break is wrapping up, but this year families got a little taste of normalcy at theme parks after the pandemic changes things for the past two years. So while the challenge for local theme parks has been work turnover and employee retention during the pandemic, SeaWorld and Six Flags Fiesta Texas tell our Alicia Beretta that they are prepared for the peak season. Thank you. For many, it's the first spring break since the pandemic began that they're finally enjoying their time off. This, as the nation faces a labor shortage across many sectors, pushing companies like Six Flags Fiesta Texas to offer competitive hourly rates. And we have a variety of jobs starting as high as $15 or more. Left swing guys, go on their side. And other theme parks like SeaWorld to provide generous incentives to new employees. Right now we're offering up to a $1,000 bonus for those who come and work over at the water park as a lifeguard. And we also have $750 bonuses for those who come and get hired into our food and beverage area. Worker driven changes to meet the spring break demand and prevent ride closures. Right now, no rides are closed right now due to staffing. Uh, we've been lucky to continue to maintain our ambassadors that have continued on because we're now year round. Jeff Filico, marketing and communications manager for Six Flags Fiesta Texas says they're nearly fully staffed. We've done things like brought in temporary workers to help some of our support positions. We move around our team members on a daily basis as needed. Both parks assured that if it comes down to a ride being closed, more often than not, it deals with weather. Last uh, week's cold weather did kind of take a few things down. There are conditions here in the rock quarry that are unique to our environment. And regardless of the current staffing situation, both parks continue to hire employees to ensure families enjoy their visit. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 548, 56 degrees. A lot going out on the roadways this yeah, morning. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It's been very busy for you. It has. Unfortunately, we're inching closer to the weekend, and we've had plenty of problems here in the, in the traffic lab. And out on the roadways, 37 at Houston, though, we want to get a look around town because we've been really focused on one particular spot. But as you can see, 37 at Hackberry, we're not really seeing a lot of other problems out there. 1604 at Spurs Ranch, but 1604 has been a problem spot. Let's go ahead and take you right to that map. We see the bird's eye view not showing any issues. 
issues in terms of congestion. But as we bring you in closer here to 1604, that is where that deadly crash unfortunately took place a little bit earlier this morning. Jonathan Cotto has been live there. I was just texting him right now. He mentioned to me that uh, we have a medical examiner out there on the scene, which means that it could be a while before we actually start to see traffic moving in that direction. So you got to drive carefully through here. But again, keep in mind, if you have to head through Highway 90, just get off of Petraco early and get on to Grossenbacher and you'll hit 90. But just make sure you're driving carefully through that area and give first responders plenty of scenes uh, room. That is 1604 at Hausman, 35 at St. Mary's. The morning's getting moving there, but it has been a busy one. Mike Oster Hage. Thank you very much, sir. And both hands on the wheel. You should do any time, yep. but uh, especially you know, if van and truck, something like that, because we've got some windy conditions already. Guys, I thought at first that this was a, a blue bonnet, but it is the um, first hyacinth flower of the season and absolutely gorgeous out there. So that's down close to the ground. So hopefully that doesn't get kind of uh, knocked around from all the wind today. We've got uh, some clear skies out there. This camera, I keep you know showing this one to see whether it is shaking. Uh, it is not right now. We've got 14 mile per hour sustained winds out there, so nothing really blustery as of yet. 26 Kerrville and uh, got some gusts to 24. We are going to be seeing wind gusts, though. 30, 35, you know, like this out there, 30, 35, uh, close to 40 miles per hour, primarily in the first chunk of the day. That's when we'll have the windiest conditions. Still breezy, uh, even up through noon with some of these gusts, 20, 25 miles per hour, and they'll begin to taper off. But it's going to be the morning hours when we see the, uh, the higher wind gusts. Again, 30, 35, uh, maybe close to 40 miles per hour at times. 58 in town. 49 now Kerrville, 50 Comfort, 50 Bernie stage. And this cooler is going to continue to get uh, kind of pushed on in here over the course of the next couple of hours. We were right around the low 60s, low to mid 60s just a couple of hours ago. So again, we're continuing to, to cool off. You don't cool off as quickly when you have the windy conditions just because it kind of keeps the air stirred up. If the wind were to slacken off, then you you know get that colder air settling down here to the surface. Uh, despite those winds, though, I think we do drop down, continuing in through the mid 50s down the low 50s, then we start to a rebound right about the time that obviously the sun comes up. So we'll have our coldest temperatures between seven and eight o'clock this morning and then make it up into the mid 60s today by noon. Winds are still going to be obviously an issue as I was talking about and we'll uh, top off into the mid 70s later on today. So good looking day. Slightly above normal high temperatures and uh, low temperatures this morning are going to be right about where they should be in the low 50s. But then the next couple of days we are on the coolish side. Nothing to complain about, though, but then notice how these low temperatures bop up here by Monday, Tuesday with more humidity coming on in here, and that's also going to be reflected with the high temperatures. We are getting up into the 80s Monday and Tuesday. We will eventually get some dry air kind of coming on in here, and then Monday is also the day that we have those uh, rain chances. Still looking encouraging, and that's the nice thing that uh, – you know, we started looking at these rain chances earlier on in the week, and it's been very consistent leading up to this. So that's always an encouraging sign with long range computer models. 66 degrees today at noon. Sunny, again, windy conditions. Hang on to your hat. 60, excuse me, 75 high temperature today, sunny, and of course on the breezy side. Then tomorrow we start off in the 40s, 47 on Sunday, and great looking tomorrow. You know, jacket in the morning going out for early morning coffee, something like that. Uh, one thing on, you know, on the serious side, watch the fire issue, yeah. even though there's nothing formally posted. You know, you've got very dry air, you've got windy conditions today, and uh, the ground obviously is just parched. So just right. watch that all the way through the weekend. We've got those rain chances Monday. Gotcha, not until Monday, so right. at least the chance is there. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 553, 56 degrees out. And NASA getting closer to its goal of a lunar launch, one small step at a time. Coming up next, <laughs> the latest on the Artemis One mission. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Ukraine. Russian forces striking the city of Lviv for the first time. That's just miles from the border with Poland. And the search for survivors after that horrific attack on a theater sheltering civilians. Russia has changed its tactics. President Biden holding a high stakes call with China's leader. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. 
All right, now to some news that is out of this world. NASA's Artemis mission inching closer and closer to its eventual goal of a lunar launch. So this is a massive 322 foot tall rocket. It's being moved very slowly over a four mile course right to the launch pad. That trip is expected to take about 11 hours. So once it is in place, the Artemis one will undergo a couple weeks of testing, then a dress rehearsal early next month. And while that won't involve an actual launch, it is a very important part of this process. With it, NASA can continue with plans to land the first woman and first person of color on the moon later this decade. All right, we're back here at home. It is almost time to Fiesta, and today is your chance to win a free Weather Authority Fiesta medal. Our medal giveaway will be at the Santicos Cibolo Movie Theater as I-35. All right, so you're going to start lining up at 4 p.m. The medal giveaway will be at 6 p.m. on a first-come, first-served basis. It's only one medal per person, and some of our weather team will be out there handing out the medal, so come on out, and we'll meet you out there. Time now, 5.57, 56 degrees out there. So much more still ahead right here on GMSA, including a woman who had to be cut free from her vehicle after it launched off of an upper level of 35. We have the latest on her condition. Plus, we're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos throughout the morning. There's a lot of traffic situations that you need to know about before you head out the door. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Starting this hour with some late breaking news, a shooting involving an off duty police officer. This is happening in a neighborhood in West Bear County. It's on a street called Nectar Creek, and that's not far from Marbuck Road. Katrina Weber there with a live report. Katrina, we understand the Bear County Sheriff's Office is investigating, but this does not involve a deputy. Well, that's right. Uh, they are investigating because it's in the jurisdiction, but it does involve an officer from a different agency. We're still awaiting confirmation, but I can tell you what I see right here. There are a couple of cars here from Northside Independent School District. Now, we don't know if the officer is from that agency, but those cars are here. So I just wanted to point that out right off the bat. Now, we're waiting for more information, but what I have learned so far from a public information officer with BCSO is that this involves uh, an alleged burglary, someone who is trying to break into a home, possibly uh, the home of an off-duty police officer, and that police officer then did shoot that person. Uh, the person was taken to a hospital. We understand there are no fatalities here, according to what deputies have told me, but we're waiting for more details on what happened. They were called here at least before 4.30 this morning, and they have the street blocked off. This is Nectar Creek at Overlook Point, uh, this neighborhood just off Marbach Road. And so that's the situation here. They have this area roped off. And again, we're waiting for that public information officer uh, to arrive here and give us more details on what happened. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you, Katrina. All right. So the real story throughout the morning that we've been talking about a lot, traffic. It's a chaotic situation out there on the roads. Our Stephen Cavazos has been very busy this morning keeping us updated. What's the latest? Well, unfortunately, uh, we're entering the 6 a.m. hour with flashing lights still here off 1604. Our friends at Transguide have provided us a different shot, and you can see that we do have that portion of 1604 that has been closed off following a deadly crash overnight. Jonathan Gotha will be live with us in just a moment, but let's go ahead and see how this is impacting traffic because we're not seeing congestion anywhere else, but as we bring you here to the far west side. We see that slight buildup of yellow in the southbound lanes of 1604. Texot has that listed at Petranco. So again, keep in mind if this is your travel route in the morning, you're going to want to find an alternative route because it is not looking good, especially as we're getting close to morning rush hour. So a slight buildup of traffic there, but uh, we're getting some different views here. The camera moving around from trans guide, but Jonathan Gotho has a better view live of the ground. Jonathan, any indication that this scene will be wrapping up? Stephen, I think we can anticipate for these lanes, these southbound lanes on 16.04 to open up here very shortly. As you can see here uh, behind me is the car that was involved in this crash. Uh, crews here have been able to pull out the car that was uh, in the embankment about 60 feet down from these main lanes. But this is what we know so far. We've learned this crash happened close to 1 o'clock this morning. They tell us a male driver and a female passenger were traveling southbound on 16.04 when the driver went off the road into the median crashing through a barrier. And like I mentioned, falling about 60 feet down into this embankment. Right now, we are over Medina Creek right here uh, near the exit off Petrenko Road and Military Drive. They say the vehicle went airborne before rolling several times, catching on fire and landing almost on the complete opposite end of this embankment. But of course, 
the cause, the rate of speed, and if even alcohol was a factor in this, this crash, that's all under investigation. We're learning the driver was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. Roadways here should be open here very, very soon. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And we will keep you updated on both of those stories, of course, throughout the rest of the morning. Here's a live look uh, looking off to the northwest. And again, this camera is steady for right now, but uh, a lot of times it gets kind of bounced around when the winds start to pick up. And it's been very windy all morning long, 24 mile per hour sustained winds, Kerrville 13 at the airport. And we are going to see as the morning rolls on, wind is going to definitely be picking up. We've already have some gusts to 22 at the airport, ball 30, 23, go up I-10, 21 Bernie stage, and then Kerrville. And this is what we've been talking about all morning that we're looking at wind gusts approaching 40 miles per hour. And that will be the case again, especially throughout the first portion of the day. Temperatures have continued to drop down pretty much across the board. We're down in the 40s up there in the hill country right now. 50 now Bernie stage and we've already uh, dropped close to 10 degrees from uh, just about uh, three, four hours ago here in town. And we'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches as this colder air continues to a relatively colder air continues to filter on in here. Obviously a jacket's a pretty good idea this morning with temperatures in the 40s and 50s and the breezy conditions. A whole bunch of allergens are out there. Oak is still on the low side, but I know there's a lot of those. Uh, the leaves have been falling and the catkins are now starting to uh, to spring on the the oak trees. 66 today at noon and 75 for a high temperature. Gusty winds, especially the first portion of the day. It's still breezy enough later on this afternoon. A very good looking day. And of course, with the dry air that we now get a reinforcing shot of dry air moving on in here. That's just going to keep the fire danger on the higher side today and really through the weekend. Good news is we still have a chance of some rain later on in the forecast coming in here by Monday. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. A man in the hospital this morning after a drive by shooting on the city's west side. This is what we know right now. It happened around 3 a.m. It happened on Highway 90 and at South Callahan. That's where police say a man in his 30s was driving. Someone in another vehicle started shooting at him. Now he was shot in the upper torso. He even had some injuries on his face because of fragments of glass that shattered right towards him. Now he was taken to the hospital. He is expected to recover. No word yet on if any suspects are in custody. A man, woman and baby lucky to be alive this morning. Fire crews were able to pull them out of their vehicle after they were hit by another driver last night. Now, it happened around 1030 at Culebra and Ingram on the west side of town. Police tell us that other driver slammed into them, causing their vehicle to roll over onto the sidewalk. All three were rushed to the hospital. Big update now on that deadly crash in West Texas from earlier this week involving the University of Southwest College golf team. Investigators are now saying a 13 year old boy was behind the wheel of the truck that slammed into a bus head on a total of nine people killed, including former Pleasanton High School student Travis Garcia. The National Transportation Safety Board is also revealing what may have caused the truck to veer into the bus. Uh, the board says the truck had a spare that blew out just moments before the crash. And turning now to the war in Ukraine, you're looking at a live picture of the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. More civilian deaths are being reported in that area, including an American, as Russia's war rages on. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken says he personally agrees with President Joe Biden that Russia is committing war crimes in Ukraine. The president is scheduled to speak with his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping today to assess where Beijing starts on the war. That's right. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Good morning. The Biden administration has been concerned about why weeks into this war, China still hasn't denounced Russia's deadly attacks on Ukraine and its civilians. In the Ukrainian capital city of Kyiv, relentless Russian missile strikes leaving neighborhood after neighborhood in ruins, surviving locals sifting through the rubble of their destroyed homes. To the east, heavy black smoke billowing over a street market in Kharkiv. U.S. officials say as Ukraine's resistance stalls the Russian advance on the ground, the Kremlin is now relying on longer range missile systems doing major damage across the country. The ABC News source adding that generations of high ranking members of the U.S. military, quote, are simply astonished how poorly the Russians have performed. Fears now about what Putin may do next. We believe that Moscow may be setting the stage to use a chemical weapon and then falsely blame Ukraine 
to justify escalating its attacks on the Ukrainian people. President Biden calling Putin a murderous dictator and a thug. Putin's brutality and what he's doing and his troops are doing in Ukraine is just inhumane. The president also sent to speak with China's leader today about whether Beijing is planning to help Russia with its war in Ukraine in any way. Bloomberg reports there are, quote, signs that China is seeking ways to soften the blow of sanctions imposed on Russia. In the meantime, a bipartisan group of senators is heading to Poland and Germany this weekend to learn more from top military leaders about the NATO and U.S. response to the war in Ukraine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And in your morning consumer news, the S&P 500 on track for its biggest weekly gain since late 2020. This as U.S. stocks rallied for a third consecutive day yesterday, despite the latest surge in the price of crude oil. Investors starting to reassess the impact the war on Ukraine will have on the U.S. stock market. Now the S&P climbing nearly 5% so far this week. The Nasdaq using a 1.3% and the Dow adding 1.2% yesterday. But here's the thing. Before this morning, with anticipation of meeting with Xi Jinping, futures of all stock markets are down. And super low mortgage rates seem to be a thing of the past. The average 30-year fixed home loan rising above 4% for the first time in nearly three years. Lending rates likely to go even higher following the Fed's quarter-point interest rate hike this week. This, as would-be homeowners, also face soaring housing prices. All right, so here at home, changes in parking and security. They are headed to the St. Mary's Strip in just the next few weeks. So during a meeting yesterday, Tobin Hill residents, families, and Business Owners Association, they discussed possible solutions in the works. And this is all in responses to complaints about crime, trash, and yes, parking. Six out of 19 businesses have agreed to voluntarily change their standard operating procedures. Some of those changes have to do with limiting the entry age to the bar to 21 years old, the prices of drinks, even hiring off-duty sheriff's deputies to patrol inside businesses and patrol the streets. The San Antonio Police Department will implement some residential-only street parking with officers patrolling the area starting next weekend. For patrons wanting to visit St. Mary's bars and businesses, it seems that ride-sharing is going to be big in the future. We need more little areas where rideshare can pick up and drop off passengers safely instead of just pulling on the side of the street. The overall goal for the Tobin Hill Community Association and Business Association is to work together, look for positive progress all around in the next two years. If you have any questions about this, about the plan, you can head over to ksat.com, see what an entertainment area in Dallas did to find a common ground in a very, very similar situation. Time now, 6-11, 55 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on the rising gas prices across the country and when we might see them drop. And just ahead, we're going to tell you about a new way you can help people who are struggling in Ukraine. And taking a look outside with live cam, starting not too cold at 55 degrees, but prepare for the wind today. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. PayPal helping Ukraine. Users of PayPal can now send money right to Ukrainians wherever they are. Previously, people in Ukraine were only able to send money out of the country. Now, people in Ukraine can receive funds and make transfers. PayPal is waiving most fees on Ukrainian accounts. Samsung has unveiled a new mid-range phone that features more power at a lower price. The A53 5G comes with a bigger battery that the company claims will last for two days, and it costs $499, $50 less than its predecessor. Samsung is already taking pre-orders. All right, T-Mobile partnering with BMW to offer the first 5G-connected car in the United States. The vehicles come with unlimited voice calling and unlimited 5G data for 2022 models and future vehicles. The service can be added to a customer's existing plan for just $20 a month. And speaking of vehicles, we now turn to the pain that we are all seeing at the pump. We all know the cost of gas has been rising to record level levels, and so has the anxiety that millions of Americans face each day. All right, ABC's Andrea Fujii explains. This morning, proof of the heavy toll high gas prices are taking on Americans. Thousands of drivers in Chicago waited in line for hours Thursday to get a free fill up. I've been out here since five o'clock this morning. A local businessman donated $200,000 in gas to stations across the city, and he says he'll do it again next month. Here's a blessing. And I thank everybody that put their efforts to help, you know. 
It comes as Americans brace for even higher prices at the pump. Oil prices climbed 8% Thursday due to growing supply concerns stemming from the war in Ukraine. The International Energy Agency warns by April, global markets could see the biggest supply crisis in decades. In California, gas prices now average 5.78 a gallon. To offer relief, some state lawmakers are now proposing a $400 rebate for every taxpayer. High gas prices also affecting how kids get to school, with some districts now relying on a limited number of hybrid and electric buses. Having those options really allows us to continue on. <laughs> And days after Uber and Lyft announced fuel surcharges, Amazon Flex drivers who use their own vehicles to make deliveries are now demanding higher pay to offset the pain at the pump. Experts say if gas prices stay this high, the average U.S. household could spend an extra $1,300 this year on gas. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. And outside with TransGuy, things are moving in some areas, but let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. You know, 16 to 4, again, has been a problem spot if you've been with us throughout the morning. Stephanie, as we get a look at TransGuy, we're seeing some empty roads out over here off I-10 at Hackberry, which is some good news for drivers that have to make their way out in the next few moments. But other areas, as I mentioned, on 16 to 4 have not been a great uh, spot to be at, especially for some drivers that have been there, uh, for drivers that may be waking their way in there right now. As you can see, we have that slight buildup in the southbound lanes there due to a crash, a deadly crash. Unfortunately, Jonathan Goto has been live there throughout the morning, and one of the things he did mention uh, during the last time we spoke to him was that this could be clearing up just in time for morning rush. But we will work to get more information on this particular incident. But you can see a slight buildup of traffic in those southbound lanes. Wider look at the map doesn't show much else as we drive over here, but there's still some road debris detected off I-10 eastbound at Proband. So make sure that you are driving carefully and stay alert. Both hands is the wheel, as Mike Osterhage has been saying throughout the morning. 618, we're not seeing problems anywhere else around the city, so that's some good news, especially here in the metro area, as a lot of people make their way out the door. 281 at Grayson, you can see traffic moving there. US 90 at Couples. Looks like things are getting going, guys. All right. Well, that's good for some areas and, and probably a light sweater this morning for the kiddos. Yeah, we've been cooling down. It was uh, much milder in the kind of the, the wee hours this morning and temperatures have actually here in town dropped a good uh, almost 10 degrees from right around two o'clock or so. Uh, we'll continue to drop down right around 52 when it's all said and done. That's going to be about uh, 730 between 730 and 8 o'clock and then we'll be up to 75 later on today. But notice how I keep talking about how it is going to be on the windy side and it is has been windy all morning long. This is the day of the full moon and absolutely gorgeous out there. You can look off in the western sky and probably see it and it is called the full warm moon. These are some of the from the old farmers almanac and back to the Native Americans around the, the Great Lakes area. Also other names eagle moon, goose moon, sugar moon and this one applies today the wind strong moon because we've got on the day of the full moon some pretty strong winds out there 13 miles per hour out at the airport 16 Port SA and 20 25 Kerrville and then again those got at they actually last a half hour. It was gusting to 37 at Kerrville, but now gusting to 40 in Lost Maples. And this is what we're going to continue to see throughout the morning are these wind gusts that and kind of the, the, the stronger winds will continue to kind of work their way across the area and then work their way down to the south. And that's why red flag warnings are posted for our extreme southern counties. And this is coming out of the Corpus Christi office, and that's nine o'clock up until seven o'clock this evening for the red flag warning. There's nothing formally posted elsewhere for the majority of our viewing area. But of course, you've got really, really low humidity, strong winds, and the ground is just so dry that fire danger is definitely going to be high. So again, we drop down to around 52 degrees, then we'll start the warm up as the sun comes up and really jump up into the uh, mid 60s by noon. Again, still windy, although the strongest winds are going to be from now until say early afternoon. A decent breeze even you know going into four or five o'clock and we'll be up to uh, 75 and then things will cool off relatively quickly once we get into the overnight hours so if you are heading out this evening Jack, it's not a bad idea because we'll end up uh, dropping down into the 40s by tomorrow morning early all right as far as anything precipitation wise 
We don't even have any clouds out there for today, tomorrow, much of the day on Sunday. Clouds will increase late on Sunday, and the humidity is also going to be coming back on here. That's going to be feeding a couple of showers around the area on Monday. This particular computer model, and this is where you know nothing is written in stone yet as far as rain money. It is a good chance for some rain, but how long it lasts, that's the question. This computer model gets everything out of here by about midday, mid-afternoon. This computer model. Same scenario has rain moving in overnight Sunday into Monday. Light to moderate showers, couple of uh, thunderstorms. They also continue to try and work their way out by about midday, but then they sort of come back in here and hang around into the evening hours of Monday. So that'll be something obviously we keep an eye on. The stronger storms, yes, there is the chance for a couple of stronger storms in our area, but uh, it looks like the, the center of the strongest storm is going to be well up in the northeastern portion of the state, and that's going to be on Monday. 66 degrees today at noon, sunny, still windy conditions out there, and high temperature today makes it up to 75, and a pretty good breeze. Then tomorrow we start off 46 degrees, so even cooler than tomorrow morning and 47 on Sunday morning, getting up into the uh, mid and upper 70s both days, 80 on Monday, chance for showers and a few thunderstorms around the area. And then we are going to be uh, kind of peaking a little bit on Tuesday. Another front is going to sort of keep temperatures in check by midweek. All, All right. right. Keep an eye on it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 622, 55 degrees out. Silver and Black have a date with New Orleans tonight, oh. and a win would go a long way for our San Antonio Spurs and their playoff chances. We're going to have a preview. What can I do with less asthma? With Depixent, I can do more. Yeah. Yard work. Teamwork. Long walks. Okay. Game on. <laughs> That's how you do more with Depixent, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Depixent's not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function with better breathing in as little as two weeks. It can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Depixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Hey, come on. Just ask your asthma specialist about Depixent. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go the Silver and Black back in action tonight. And believe it or not, at 27 and 43 on the season, the Spurs still have a chance at making the playoffs. They can move one step closer to the play-in bracket if they beat New Orleans this evening. Spurs Pelicans tipping off tonight here at home, 7:30 at the AT&T Center, and of course, as usual. Go Spurs, go. Remember just a couple nights ago, we had that exhilarating win over the yes. Thunder. Lonnie Walker with the oof. Oh, that was so cool. Yeah, his. I wish I would have seen it. Yep. I went to I went to bed, you know, early you know, for, for the shift. When you wake up at 2 a.m., that's understandable. <laughs> but, I mean, but when I went to bed, they were up at halftime, and I remember thinking, okay, please keep the lead, and, you know, and then the next morning I was super excited to see that they won. So let's do this again, Spurs. Yes. 2-0, yeah. oh. that's what we're looking for. Yes. 627, 55 degrees now. And still ahead on GMSA, details on an overnight crash that sent one woman to the hospital after her vehicle launched off the highway. Right now we are following breaking news from West Bear County, a shooting involving an off-duty police officer. Sheriff's deputies have been investigating in a neighborhood off of Marbach since early this morning. Katrina Weber is also there with a live report. And Katrina, have you learned anything about what happened? Well, we're still waiting for that update from the public information officer, but what he has told me is that this was a shooting involving some sort of off-duty police officer, not someone with the Bear County Sheriff's Office, although they are investigating here. They've been here since at least before 4.30 this morning. Uh, we can see another vehicle here, though, that belongs to Northside ISD. Now, we're awaiting confirmation to see if perhaps that officer involved in the shooting uh, does work for them. We don't know for sure, but that car is there. 
Let me give you a look at some video going back a little bit earlier when uh, deputies had this area pretty well covered. Uh, what we have learned from the public information officer is that uh, this possibly involved an attempted burglary uh, of that off-duty officer's house and that he did shoot someone who allegedly was trying to break into his home. Now, that person who was shot, we understand, has been taken to a hospital. I was told by deputies here there are no fatalities involved. But uh, again, the sheriff's office investigating, and we are awaiting the arrival of that public information officer to give us an update on the situation. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you, Katrina. Now, through the morning, we've been monitoring the roadways, giving you live looks. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, how's it look? had some problems earlier. Yeah, that's right, Max. Stephanie, uh, looks like things are cleared out. I have cleared out, that is, off 1604 at Petranco. This has been one of the biggest problem spots this morning. A deadly crash and unfortunately had a portion of this corridor blocked off for quite a while. But what we're looking at now is that drivers are able to make their way through here without any problems. And that's really good, especially as we inch closer to morning rush hour. But right now, let's go ahead and start with that map because we did have that crash pinpointed right near Petranco. And as you saw a little bit earlier, there was some yellow that was building up in that direction which was obviously indicating a slowdown. But right now, it does look like those lanes are open, and it doesn't look like it's causing any problems. But be on the lookout still. We have that road debris off of I-10 eastbound at ProBand. Wider look, the map at 632 doesn't show any problems anywhere else, so that's fantastic news. Again, if you do have to head out the door in the next few moments. But 1604 Petrenko, well, that's where we saw a buildup of traffic. I want to go ahead and toss it over to Jonathan Cotto, who is traveling along 1604. Jonathan, how are the roads looking like right from, from your view? How are the roads looking like right from your view? Good morning, Stephen, and thank you. Right now, the road conditions are clear. We do know that we were experiencing some major delays as the crash uh, causing four road closures here on 1604 on the city's far uh, west side. We know it's been a busy morning for first responders. We're about to get on 1604, so you can see that that those lanes are open now. But uh, this morning, the, the crash, we're learning it happened close to 1 o'clock this morning. They're telling us that a driver and a female passenger were traveling southbound on 1604 when the driver went off the road and into the median crashing through a barrier and falling down to an embankment over Medina Creek here off 1604. They say the vehicle did go airborne before rolling several times, catching on fire and landing almost on the opposite end of the embankment. And that's the information we have right now. Of course, uh, authorities are investigating the rate of speed here. Also, they're, they're looking into seeing if alcohol was a factor, but we are told the driver of that vehicle was taken to a nearby hospital and is expected to be okay. Again, his female passenger did not make it, did not survive this crash, but of course the details involving this crash are all under investigation. We'll update you as that information is made available. Reporting live from Storm Chaser, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And of course, we'll keep you updated on both those situations throughout the rest of the morning. All right, here's a look from our camera on top of the building over there at 10 at 410. There's the smokestack still dressed up in green for St. Patty's Day. And this camera has been shaking a little bit because, again, we've been talking about how we've got some pretty good winds out there this morning, and it's going to stay pretty breezy all day long. Winds out of the northwest at 13, that's the sustained wind. And then also, we've got the really dry air, and those two factors on top of very dry ground, very high fire danger today, as well as through most of the weekend. 25 mile per hour winds at Kerrville, 24 Lost Maples. Those are the sustained winds. 14 Bernie Stage, 16 Port SA and Canyon Lake at 11 right now. And then the gusts, 23 Bernie Stage, 33 Kerrville. And again, gusting to 40 miles per hour. And we're going to continue to see gusts 35, 40 miles per hour throughout the rest of the morning. And they'll start to taper off when we'll buy later on this afternoon. But still going to be breezy throughout most of the day. 55 in town, got 40s. Actually, it's continuing to drop down. And most of the 40 degree readings or readings in the 40s, I should say, even now down toward Bernie State. So we'll continue to drop down in and around San Antonio the next couple of hours. We started off right around low to mid 60s, so we've already lost 5 to 10 degrees over the course of the morning. Jack, it's a pretty good idea, and a lot of allergens, not a lot of any particular allergen. Everything is on the light side. Seasonally cool this morning. Low 50s are where you'd expect it to be this time of year. Breezy to windy, I guess I should say. Windy throughout much of the day, although the highest wind gust this morning, mid-70s for a high temperature, and weekend looks fantastic. Cool mornings, great afternoons. But late on Sunday, the clouds start to work their way in here, as does the humidity. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around on Monday. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Steph, Max.
Thank you, Mike. So we've been talking about crashes this morning, a terrifying crash in the downtown area, ending with at least one person in the hospital. So take a look. This happened around one this morning. This is on I-35 southbound in San Pedro. Now, police tell us a woman driving a sedan ended up launching her vehicle from the upper level of the highway to the lower level. Now, she had to be cut free from the vehicle by first responders. This at this time, her condition still unknown, and they're still investigating, trying to figure out how exactly this happened. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what led to the shooting of a minor last night. This happened around 9 on the southwest side of town. Officers responded to Valley High Drive near Springville Drive for reports of a young person shot. However, officers say the shooting actually happened somewhere else and that the victim was shot in the shoulder and brought to that Valley High location for help. Right now, it's not clear how old that victim was and police do not have any suspects at this time. All right, so take a look at this. This is a new video out of East Texas. Windy conditions fueling a massive fire. So far, more than 38,000 acres in that area have burned. This is all according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. Right now, evacuation orders are in place for several East Texas counties. Fortunately, no injuries have been reported yet. And now to Missouri, at least six people are dead after a massive crash. Several others were hurt. This was the scene yesterday. More than 50 vehicles were involved and the interstate there was shut down for hours. Investigators say it was a frightening scene. Now to the latest on the war in Eastern Europe. You're taking a live look from Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital. So as the conflict rages on week after week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken says he personally agrees with President Joe Biden that Russia is committing war crimes in Ukraine. Thousands of people have been killed in these attacks. Officials there reporting at least 52 of the casualties are children. In the meantime, President Joe Biden scheduled to speak with China's leader Xi Jinping later today. They plan to discuss where Beijing and China stands on this conflict. And some good news about COVID-19. Community levels and projected deaths are down. Now officials are talking about the transition out of the emergency phase. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, that means relaxing restrictions and preparing for the future. We want to make sure that people have an opportunity to relax their mitigation strategies when things are good, as they are right now. Health officials are starting to talk about transitioning out of the COVID-19 emergency phase. Here are the numbers behind that good news. Less than 1% of people in the U.S. now live in areas with high community levels. So the CDC recommends few people need to wear a mask in indoor public spaces. It's not too soon if you observe the caveat that's associated with that. And the caveat is we need to be flexible. More good news is the CDC forecasts a decline in weekly COVID deaths. Our hospitals are not full, but then that they should put that mask in a drawer. A resurgence could come from an Omicron subvariant that spreads quickly. I would not be surprised given the fact that we've begun to open up and we have an increase in the BA2 variant that we'll be seeing an increase in cases. Experts say it might not be as deadly as other variants, especially if people are boosted. Moderna says it's asking the FDA to authorize another booster for emergency use for adults. Pfizer wants another one for those 65 and older. The final bit of good news is hope for the future. This may very well become a seasonal disease where the amplitude of disease, the amount of disease that's out there gets less and less over time. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. And it's almost time for Fiesta. Today is your chance to win a free Weather Authority Fiesta medal. And our medal giveaway will be at the Santico Cibolo Movie Theater. That's happening at I-35 in Waterstein. You can begin lining up at 4 p.m. So the medal giveaway will be at 6 p.m. on a first-come, first-served basis. And it's only one medal per person. So some of our weather team will be out there to hand out those medals. So come out there and meet them. I'm so glad Fiesta is back and back in full force. Yes, yes. And it's back early this yeah. year. I think it's early than it's ever that been that I've remembered. So it's good. Cooler temps. Yeah, that's true. I agree. <laughs> Time now, 640, 54 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why there might be more benefits to getting hobbies than you may think. And welcome back at 644. So how do you like to spend your free time? Well, it turns out a recent survey found that most popular hobbies during the pandemic were watching TV, movies, reading, and working out. 
go on runs. Yes, I, there I like go. that. I don't that's know if like it's a hobby, though. I'd say that's your hobby. It's like a stress relief. <laughs> there you go. So, in fact, having a hobby, any hobby, is good for you, and it may actually activate parts of the brain that help create new neural pathways and stave off dementia. David Sears reports on some other ways hobbies impact your body and your soul. Jewelry making. Training the service dogs is definitely a hobby. I do cycling. Having a hobby may be more important than you realize. A hobby is something that you want to do to get away from your daytime job. Bringing meaning to leisure time and not continually scrolling through Netflix or social media improves our mental health and strengthens our sense of connection, identity, and autonomy. Not having time for hobbies is a common excuse, but it isn't valid. Hobbies can actually structure your time since you're more likely to finish all your work if you have something you find joy in doing afterward. You want that hobby to be something that's completely separate. And what about turning your hobby into a side job? You wouldn't be alone in this idea. 55% of adults want to turn their hobbies into a job. But is it beneficial mentally? Hustle culture often causes major burnout and the need to monetize on everything we do makes every moment feel like work. Turning a hobby into your work, I think could take away the joy of your hobby. Researchers also discovered hobbies were associated with lowering blood pressure, body mass index, and stress hormones. According to one study, hobbies are linked with decreased symptoms of depression and 30% lower odds of experiencing depression. David Sears, KZ12 News. All right, turning to traffic now, it has been Pretty chaotic throughout the morning. Yeah, and now we're seeing some flashing lights at I-10 in Wurzbach. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, unfortunately, the commute has been plagued with problems this morning. I-10 at Wurzbach got a shaky camera there from Transguide. I'm sure uh, Mar Mike can talk about that in just a moment, but uh, we are seeing another crash that has been picked up here in the eastbound lanes of I-10. Not clear exactly what caused this crash or if the drivers involved have faced any injuries, but we're going to find out what's going on there in just a moment. But let's go ahead and just pinpoint it right here in the eastbound lanes. Again, at I-10 at Wurzbach Road, so you got to watch out there especially if you're traveling into the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments. Let's take a drive down here. Good news that crash that Jonathan Gotha was live at that deadly crash. Unfortunately, good news here is looks like it has finally cleared, so we're not seeing any delays there, but watch out over here because there's still some debris that's picked up. That's causing a slight slowdown in the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Proban. Bird's eye view of the map at 646. We're looking good as we're getting into morning rush hour. No concerns, but this is going to be a problem spot for drivers that have to make their way through the uh, I-10 eastbound. We'll watch it close and give you those updates coming up in the next few moments. Moments. Thank you. And Mike, I know you were asking for blue bonnet pictures and now you have them. Thank you very much. And hopefully uh, you don't live next door to somebody with uh, a live oak tree and all those live oak leaves get blown in on top of these blue bonnets out there. But yeah, just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous picture. Blue bonnets in the yard. Oh, that's so pretty. Thank you very much for that. All right, that one Transguide camera was shaking, and this camera is shaking as well. Yeah, it's really starting to uh, kind of get bounced around. 13 mile per hour winds here at the airport, 16 Port SA, uh, 18 New Braunfels, and 22 and 24 up there in the Hill Country, Kerrville and Lost Maples, respectively. And again, we've been looking at those 40 mile per hour wind gusts up there in Lost Maples, 29 Kerrville and 22 here in town. So we will continue to see the, the gustier winds just stick around here throughout the rest of the morning and wind will finally ease up somewhat won't be as gusty I should say by later on today. Temperatures have been slowly declining over the past couple of hours as that that front moved through late last night and has been pulling in somewhat drier air. Well, not drier, of course, drier, but also cooler air. Pardon me, and we'll continue to drop down to right around 52 degrees. That's pretty much a normal low temperature later on this morning. And then, of course, right as the sun comes up, we start that warming process and warm up fairly quickly uh, in through, uh, say, eight o'clock up to noon, making up in to the mid 60s and then we top off right around mid 70s later on today and again still breezy enough this afternoon then the wind is going to kind of ease up somewhat tonight and we'll have clear skies and with this dry air that's going to allow temperatures to uh, to drop down so it'll cool off kind of quickly this evening if you are heading off and also one thing nice we're gonna have great looking sunrise this morning and we'll have beautiful sunshine all day long with all this dry air upstairs there in the atmosphere and going into the weekend nothing out there just plenty of sunshine beautiful sunsets uh, the moon coming up tonight is going to be fantastic because of course the day is the day of the the full moon tomorrow beautiful day as well and starting off on Sunday but then the clouds move in here later on Sunday and that's when the rain chances move in overnight into Monday morning in broad brush with this computer model but uh, the 
the forecast has been very consistent for the past couple of days, which is encouraging when you look that far into the future. So we'll have some showers around here. This model gets rid of the rain by roughly early to mid afternoon. Different computer model then takes uh, this rain and kind of moves it back in on top of us. This one also has rain overnight and into Monday morning, but then keeps this uh, these showers and thunderstorms around even into Monday evening. So that'll be something that we watch and there is the chance for some stronger thunderstorms on Monday. The majority of those are going to be further up into uh, the northeastern portion of the state. 66 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies, windy, yet yeah, not as windy as this morning, but still a pretty good breeze out there this afternoon with a high temperature up to 75. Tomorrow, 46. Very chilly morning, 47 Sunday, 78 both days. Increasing cloudiness on Sunday and chance of rain on Monday. Temperatures peak Tuesday and then another front. It's going to kind of put a reality check on on temperatures. All right, so the producer let me know we have a little extra time. So we were talking about hobbies, how it's good for your brain. Mm -hmm. Mike Osterhage, oh, your yeah, hobbies? Oh, yeah, share yours. As we like to say, making sawdust, woodworking. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Great way to take your mind. I mean, because you think about, you know, work and build and this and this and that, but just try that to That gives you your that chance That's to relax. My, yes. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. What have you made recently? Uh, working on making some, uh, some new drawers. For a desk. Nice. So. Yeah. I know, Mike. You're so handy. Mike, <laughs> our own and, Bob and the Builder. And prepared as well. Kind of, yeah. So fantastic, Mike Osterhage. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Time now, 6:50. 54 degrees out. And tomorrow on GS GMSA, how one woman is changing the lives of mothers who have lost their children to crime. You don't want to miss what she's doing to make a difference in the lives of so many. And taking a quick live look out at the Alamo City. Ooh, looks calm and quiet out there. Earlier we saw the camera shaking from the wind, 54 degrees to start your morning. Wait on that, uh, that car wash, right, Mike? No, not a bad day to, to get it. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at Monday with the possible storms, but okay. If we want to clean a, for the weekend. clean car for the weekend, yes. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Ukraine. Russian forces striking the city of Lviv for the first time. That's just miles from the border with Poland. And the search for survivors after that horrific attack on a theater sheltering civilians. Russia has changed its tactics. President Biden holding a high-stakes call with China's leader. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. All right, well, back here at home, big reminder, today is your chance to win a free Weather Authority Fiesta Medal, our medal giveaway. We'll be at the Santicos Ciblo Movie Theater. You can be lining up starting at 4 p.m. The medal giveaway will be at 6 p.m. on a first-come, first-served basis. And here's the thing, it is only one medal per person. And one of my favorite parts, some of our weather team will be out there handing out the medal. So come on out, and we'll meet you there. And for now, let's take one last look at traffic with Stephen Cavazos. All things are moving right now, Stephanie. We can take a look at traffic here at 37 at Hackberry. It doesn't seem that there's any problems right now, but uh, there are still some issues out there on the roadways. Keep in mind, I-10 eastbound at Wurzbach. We have a crash here, not causing slowdowns. Good news here, crash cleared off of 1604 southbound at Petrenko. So, but just watch out. We still have debris over here on the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Probent, Mike. Starting to see the glow of the morning sunrise out there. Looking off to these cameras, not shaking right now, but boy, out there in the Hill Country, hang on to your hat. 22 mile per hour winds at Kerrville, 24 Lost Maples, gusts to 40, and we're going to be seeing very blustery winds throughout the rest of the day. And 53 now at the airport, 46 Bernie Stage, 55 at Port SA, so cooler air. And then nice big warm up throughout the day. We are going to make it up to 75 for high temperature and a good looking weekend. All right, Mike Ostrade, Stephen Cavazza, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here, 9 a.m. Have a great Friday.